This is an attempt to show you how to solve the quartic anharmonic oscillator using a small Python program. It's not incredibly long, so it won't take us very long to discuss it either. So let's see what we try to do over here. Uh, as usual, we first import all the relevant libraries. In this case, I need both NumPy and SciPy, scientific Python, which will actually provide me with the diagonalization codes I'm going to need. Then in the next line, I define two functions, a function called h and a function called ease. The function h calculates one matrix element. So for a given m and n and anharmonicity lambda, it will actually calculate the matrix element of the Hamiltonian. We first of all calculate the factor, a factor out front, which is lambda over 16, as it was in the notes. Remember, the 1 over 16 is the 1 over a quarter that came from the original definition plus the other quarter that came from going from x to a dagger plus a. And then we got four, we got five different options where we get a non-zero element. And as usual, we're very careful multiplying all the integers by 1.0 before we take the square roots. And then we calculate our way through. Uh, there's nothing too surprising over here. The only thing you may want to look at is there's an n plus a half in the line where n equals m. The n plus a half is just a plain harmonic oscillator. Then we fill a matrix, and as the usual thing, it scrolls off the screen, but it's not that hard. It's standard uh, matrix, matrix array uh, list, list processing in uh, Python, where we actually do define it for, for m in x range, for n in x range within an array. And so if we've got, an, got a list within a list, we get now the nested list, which we can then turn into an array by calling it with np.matrix. Be careful if you're using Python 3, the x range should be range. Uh, it's just not defined. Then what we do, we calculate the eigenvalues. The H means it's a Hermitian, real, in this case it's actually a real symmetric matrix. So we use a method that's designed for that because there's more stability associated with that. We call that and we do some calculations for 10, uh, 10 values for lambda equals 0, 1 value for lambda equals 0.1, etc, etc. And if we now go to the command window and see what really happens over there, we see that if we calculate the 10 values, we get the eigenvalues of the harmonic oscillator. No big surprise. If we only calculate one value with an anharmonicity in there, we find that even with one value, the energy has changed. That value is not the correct eigenvalue. If we actually go up in the number of states we calculate, so we go to 10 first and to 101 next. Then we can clearly see that from 10 to 101, the change is essentially non-existent. So it's enough to calculate it with 10 states for a small value of lambda. That wouldn't be true for a larger value of lambda. And for example, if we work with lambda equals 1, we've here done a calculation where we find the first eigenvalue is 6.6209 etc etc so the energy still goes up as we add x squared it's no big surprise the energy goes up because clearly the potential pushes inwards the wave function doesn't want to extend as far outwards so that costs energy to do that so that's essentially how this code works a 